Hello everybody and welcome back to the Brothers Grim Dark. Today we have another painting tutorial for you. I'm going to be showing you how I do my yellow for my Iandin. It can be one of the more tricky colours to get right. Um, so I'm just going to talk you through the two methods that I use for getting that done. We're going to show how I do it when I'm doing armour plates and the slight tweak to the technique that I use when I'm doing cloth. Anyway, we'll just jump to the tutorial table and show you what we do. Cheers. Okay, so here is the Autark in, in question that I uh, finished converting up yesterday. Obviously not got um, her backpack on or cape just to ease with, with painting um, at this stage. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do something slightly different um, with the armour plates um, to the cloth that's underneath. They're still both going to be yellow. They're still primarily going to be aerial yellow, they're just going to have some slightly different effects um, done on them. So this is kind of an example of, of what the armour will end up looking like. Be, be like that. Um, and the cloth will be more like this. So it's just a slightly, slightly different tone. Um, you know, some very similar colours. It's basically just, uh, well, yeah, some watered down paints rather than rather than washes, just to create a different um, sort of sheen to it. Uh, anyway, so as we, we are going to begin with Aerial Yellow, and I'm just going to give a very thin coat of this um, all over um, the armour plates as well as the cloth underneath, so I can be quite uh, quick with this. So stick a couple of blotches in there. Good dollop of water, as I say, this can be this can be pretty watered down. It's going to give give good co coverage over the the white scar spray base, and um, yeah, just get to that. And yeah, you want to work quite quickly um, just to stop any of the paint from from drying. So I'll focus on a leg or so first, then move on to the on to the next leg. Um, keep that paint running and yeah try not to to let it pull too much I think I've got the consistency about right here it's going on nicely but it's not it's not too runny it doesn't look like it's gonna be pulling in any areas so yeah you just want to avoid that if you can And yeah, if you've watered it down too much, you might notice that you're starting to get some bubbles in some places. Um, yeah, just try and pop the biggest ones of those that you can, any that look like they're going to be problematic. A lot of the time they do just dry out fine, but if you spot them, it's good practice to try and just get rid of those at this stage. Okay, and that is... That is that aerial yellow on. I'm just going to leave that to dry now. And yeah, I'll be back once that has. Okay, that's that dry. And as you can see, we've now got a, a pretty solid coat of yellow across there. It has left um, a slight highlight. I don't know if you can pick that up on camera, but you know, just the, the very edges of the armour are a bit brighter than than some of the recesses, and that's that's great. That's what we're after, just a bit of natural um, highlight in there. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is just put Cassandora yellow over over everything. So when I painted Ariel's cloak, um, I didn't do this, uh, but for armor I always do this, but we will cover up this step um, to some extent when we get to doing the, the cloth underneath the armor shortly. And sort of same rules apply as the previous step. You can be quite uh, liberal and rough with this um, stage, but you also want to avoid any any pulling up, um, and you want to keep that keep that paint moving. And again, you want to just make sure that you get absolutely all those little nooks and cranny spots. As you can see, we've now got. 
some definition coming into there. Uh, and yeah, I'm just going to leave that to that to dry, and we'll be back once it is. That's that dry. And as you can see, that's got a kind of really nice definition to it now. Uh, and actually, that's as far as I go when I'm painting my gardens, and I just I just leave them at that that stage. Um, I think it looks good. Um, when I start painting this army, one of the goals for me was just to get it onto the tabletop looking good as quickly as possible and I think for the guardians just taking them to that level looks great however um, for a character like this I want to go extra mile um, so I'm going to leave the armour plates where they are for now and we're going to start focusing on that cloth underneath so I'm just going to give all the cloth underneath a thin coat of Everland Sunset now um, and obviously at this point because I want to avoid those armour plates I'm going to be taking this with a bit more bit more care um, and yeah the reason I'm I'm doing this is although I really like that sheen um, that the Cassandero yellow gives to the armor plates I don't want the cloth to have that and I don't want the cloth to be going orangey in the recesses I want the cloth to be going a more sort of muted browny colour so I'm just gonna so this is how I started Ariel's cloak I just went straight to the Cassander yellow um, so I'm gonna do that uh, sorry I went straight to the um, Everland Sunset so I'm just gonna do that now on all these armor plates and don't worry both these sections will be highlighted back up to uh, Ariel yellow and maybe even an extra highlight beyond that so they will tie in again at the end but they might start looking a little bit strange at this stage. Okay. That's that section done. Now what I'm going to do is just add some definition to that uh, with some watered down Steel Legion trap just to go into those recesses that's going to do the same sort of job that Cassander Yellow just did, um, but in the, in the cloth. Okay, uh, for this step we're going to go back to that aerial yellow again and just start applying that to the cloth. Um, it, we will add more aerial yellow to the armour as well, uh, but we need to do another step on the armour before we get to that. So I'm just going to do it onto the cloth in this stage. This in nice thin coat may decide after that that I want another thin coat. We'll just have to play it by ear or sight, I suppose. Play it by eye, that thing.
some areas you might think it'll catch a little bit and you can just do one thin coat in our areas you might want to add a second thin coat. It's just gonna have to see what you think as you go. Okay, so I've pulled that um, cloth up a bit, and it's a bit brighter now again. Um, I may go back and add a little bit more to that later on, but I need to see how the armour turns out and how that balance looks with the two of them. Um, so we're going to go back to the armour now, and we're just going to add Seraphim Sepia uh, to the deepest recesses on the armour. So I'll just kind of around these these raised areas like this. Just add, add a little bit in there just to create that depth. And again, this stage I don't bother doing on the armor of my guardians, but I do do it on my mini wraiths and anything uh, bigger than that. So it's just another example of how you can sort of scale your army up depending on how much detail you want to look want on each individual unit um, if you want to sort of have showcase units or whatever but you can still paint an army efficiently by sort of uh, maximize, minimizing where you invest your time on certain units that's how that's looking now and you'll see that armor has got a good bit of depth to it now um, so I'm just going to leave that to dry and then we'll come back and we'll start looking at the highlights again okay so we're just going to go back to the aerial yell and we're going to kind of do the same thing we just did a moment ago on the cloth but now we're going to do that on the armor and any areas of the cloth that i think i haven't quite brightened up enough i'll do that as part of this this step as well and um, so focus on those sort of higher up raised areas where you think the light would catch um, of the armor Okay, that's that step done. And uh, you'll notice I was quite uh, liberal with, uh, sorry, not liberal, that's not the right word, but I uh, left a bit of space. Um, yeah, I suppose liberal is quite a word. Left a bit of space for another highlight on top of that um, for more extreme highlights, um, which is going to be Flash Gets Yellow. Um, and this will be the final step. So um, I'm just gonna water this down and yeah, I tend to go for flash kits over um, the more creamy sort of highlights. That seems to be the way GW likes to highlight the Ariandin and other yellows. I find it takes some of the sharpness away, um, sort of the richness, um, which I don't like. So I go for, for flash kits, which is just a really 
bright, vibrant, vibrant yellow. And yeah, so same rules apply. I'm just going to stick this onto the cloth as well as the armor. And we've done enough to get the distinction between those two with the other steps we've taken, so we can highlight them both with the same edge highlight here. Okay, I think I'm gonna call that that good. Uh, yeah, that's our armor. Um, it's taken me less than an hour to paint in terms of painting time. I think it's a couple of stages that you need to let it sit and dry, but yeah, I'm really happy with how that's looking so far and yeah, I'll keep cracking with the rest of the model. Anyway, if there's any other tutorials you'd like us to, to tackle, whether it's painting or converting or whatever, if there's stuff you'd like to see us do, how we do it, please let us know. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you next time on the Brothers Come Dark.